Welcome back to Wargaming World and to a game of Nuts. So just before we start the game on this new table, just want to say thanks very much to all the new members of the Facebook group uh, Nuts Man to Man Combat. Uh, you'll see on the screen uh, what that uh, looks like. Anybody who wants to join the group, uh, just find it on Facebook and uh, we'll uh, add you to the group and uh, get involved in all the discussion on this uh, fantastic game. Now, one of the very big benefits of joining the Facebook group is that uh, it, we have a supplement to the uh, version 4 rules. Ed has very kindly uh, put in a free edition, a free upgrade, and if you join the group you will be able to uh, take the file and get all of the updated rules and information, and therefore I'm going to use them during this game I'm not going to point them out, I've done two videos uh, with a lot of uh, detail and I want this one to have lots of uh, gameplay on it. And as I say, go to the Facebook group and uh, join and then you can uh, get the uh, PDF, print it and away you go. And we have a, a different table, so from the uh, town hall on the left hand side all the way across here towards the back of the church is about six foot so therefore uh, the grid is going to be uh, across that distance and you should be able to see a picture of that on the screen now. Now the game today is called Escort Duty so you can see here on the left hand side the town hall and we have our French troops advancing along the road here we've got uh, our French cavalry and our Senegalese infantry uh, supporting uh, an officer, taking him to the town hall to set up the new HQ. Unfortunately, as the uh, French advance, there is uh, word that the Germans have potentially got there first. So let's take a look where our potential Germans are hiding. Our three locations are going to be two, two, and five. Well, five puts uh, the Germans here, located in the middle of the uh, uh, buildings. And the two twos are here, not surprisingly, hiding away in this building. I'm going to have three characters for this game from the French forces, and we're going to start here with Henri Alac, who is our French uh, cavalryman on this white horse. Secondly, we have uh, Eugène Etiste. He's the machine gunner from our Senegalese infantry unit. And finally, we have our officer, Bernard Zéjus. He's uh, from Paris, and he uh, is keen to uh, command his forces to victory over the Germans. Just before we look at the characters themselves and the role for that, uh, we're going to have a quick look at the uh, forces. So I'm going to say that the Germans have a straight rep of four, all members of their units, but we're going to have to roll for the French, so I'm going to start with the cavalry. At one, two, three, the rep is three. Four, five, six, the rep is four. So the cavalry rep is three. For the infantry, same applies. It's a one, so it's a three. So we need to have a look at the officers and see what their rep is, but the Germans will start with four. The standard cavalry and infantry will be three each. So I'm going to do two things for our three characters. First of all, I'm going to work out their rep. And then once I've done that, I'm going to see their skills and their attributes. So let's just start with the uh, cavalry. And so what we're doing here is we get one, two, three, the rep is three, four, five, it's four, at six, it's going to be five. And that is a six. So our cavalry is uh, a rep of five. So for the infantry. Uh, Note that's a rep of three, just along with the rest of the infantry. Finally, our officer. Uh, not great, so uh, three as well. So our key leader is really our uh, our cavalryman on his white horse. Also going to have a look at skill and attributes. I'm going to allocate one skill and one attribute, and this is how we're going to work it out. The red dice as I roll it is going to be for the skill. And if we get a five and six, they just don't get the skill at all. Uh, the green dice is then going to say which table we're looking at on the attributes, and then the blue dice is what is the uh, the number itself. Okay, so let's start with the cavalry. 
Okay, so skill number three, table number four, number five. Infantry doesn't have a skill. Table four, number two. And finally, our officer doesn't have a skill. Table three, number one. So here we go. Turn one. Take the roll. So um, we have uh, nothing for the French and uh, we can move with our PEF units. Let's take a look at the movement of the PEF in this building. So rep of four and we pass one. So that means he stays put. We've got two in this building. Let's take a look at the first one. Rep of four. Again, passes uh, only one, so uh, he also stays put. And the second, uh, exactly the same, so stay in, in the same position. I'd also mention that uh, you'll know from the grid that that's only just uh, in the uh, second section, which is what we rolled for. However, I've put them in cover. Uh, in the middle, it would have been right in the middle of the road. That wouldn't make uh, any sense, knowing that uh, with the French have advanced along there and would have seen them already. So that's why they're in that building. That's the end of uh, turn one, on to turn two. And this time uh, we have a movement from the cavalry and from uh, the Germans too. Our cavalry move cautiously, uh, eight inches, same pace as the infantry. And they don't uh, detect anybody as yet, but we need to have a look and see what the Germans will do. German rep of four. And uh, so uh, nothing is passed there. Puts our marker just behind that building, if you can see there. It's moved eight inches away, directly away from our cavalry. Second unit with a test. And uh, that's zero. Now that would do exactly the same thing. So it needs to move eight inches directly away from the enemy. So in terms of where they are, it'll just move to the back uh, the edge of the building on the left hand side. Third and final. Ah, now this one, it passes two, so it goes in the opposite direction. So it goes eight inches towards uh, the enemy, so it's going to get towards the back of uh, that building. See, at the end of the second turn, we've got one marker there just before the station, and the second is right at the back there, just the back of this building. Three. So, French can be activated, and none of the Germans this time, so uh, we'll see how the French uh, move. The uh, French cavalry have advanced. Uh, it's close to uh, the German just behind that building, but I don't think it's line of sight, although they are on horseback. I'm going to say at the moment I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt to the They're German. Here. The infantry are moving, but they're beginning to uh, split out on the left and right flank, so we've gone behind the buildings here on this side and uh, this section are going towards the uh, garage on the right hand side and that's the end of the turn. And uh, we have movement for the French cavalry and uh, for the uh, Germans uh, but not for the French infantry. We also have a chance of reinforcements, which could be crucial at the end of the turn. Now with this movement, uh, we most definitely have a potential line of sight. The uh, German marker over here, so let's see whether uh, uh, they uh, appear. Test against a campaign morale of four. The result is two. Yep. And that's contact, so we need to work out is it reinforcements or is it an enemy defensive position. With a one, it's reinforcements, so let's go to the reinforcements table and see what's this there. Is a patrol game. So uh, we essentially have a two uh, plus this dice to see what we've got. So two and a four, so six on the table. Right, we've got a squad on the table. We've also got uh, an anti-tank uh, rifle with us. Uh, let's see how many men we've got. Uh, we need a five plus one d6. We've got 11, so we've got a large squad here. And uh, yeah, there's certainly going to be uh, some contact. 
and uh, we'll see some firing I suspect. I'll just move the uh, trees out of the way just for a second just to show that the uh, French have stumbled on a unit moving uh, across over towards uh, this building and uh, it's a serious outfit so well, let's see what happens. We need to do an inside test with the uh, Germans and the French. Uh, the French unit is just these two so therefore the reps three and not five of the leader and uh, I'm also going to say if they take the initiative then uh, they are outgunned so I'm going to say their reaction will be to uh, to fall back but let's see how we roll. So let's uh, take a look three for the French so we get one and four for the Germans we get one two so the fact that they are equal uh, means that uh, I'm going to uh, roll again to see who's uh, who gets the initiative. Neither of the two really were uh, stationary so uh, both are actually on the move so let's start again then and this time uh, we have definitely the initiative for the Germans. Now looking at the setup there, I'm going to say that the leader at the front with the pistol, uh, the man with the rifle next to him, and the one slightly behind, the ones who are carrying the machine gun and the ammunition aren't going to fire. But I'm going to say there's another couple there at the back in terms of a rifle. So that gives us essentially one, two, three, four rifles and a pistol. So two rifles to each uh, of the cavalry and I'll do the pistol at the end so we need to roll against the rep so first rifle uh, hits twice I'll set them to hit, I'll work that out in a second uh, that's two again so it's two for the first man which is so two against this one second one uh, again, it's t uh, a hit, so it's a two, and that's a one. So uh, that's the, the the sequence there. On the table, if you remember, we got three twos and a one, but a one is still a hit. Um, they're not moving fast or anything like that, so they're going uh, relatively slowly. So the last thing we need to do is to take a look at the pistol, and that's going to be the nearest man, and that's a hit also. I'm looking to roll low, so the guy who's been hit three times... Uh, we're looking to get below his rep, and uh, let's see what we get. Six would be a kill, but those are all his reps, so therefore uh, he will, uh, for me, he's outgunned, so rather than uh, returning fire, he will duck back. Great roll and really uh, good fortune. What about the other? Uh, now that's higher than his rep, so he's going to be uh, out of the fight. Right, so we'll have an impromptu casualty marker. I haven't got one for a, a horse, but there we go. And uh, the uh, other uh, man of the of those two has uh, now ducked back. Uh, I do need to test, however, on the other two PEFs to see what happens with them. First of all, the one that's behind that building. A rep of four, so let's see what the response is. So uh, that is two, which means he moves that unit. Uh, will move towards uh, the French. And the one uh, at the back here. And that will move towards it again, so it'll go back to its original position. So as the Germans move in that direction, it's inevitably going to be an inside test. Uh, so, uh, not an inside test, I beg your pardon. Uh, we need to see what it is here in terms of uh, the forces. Control, as we have two plus whatever this number is. Uh, so that's four. So that's another squad, so we've got five men uh, plus the NCOs, and uh, let's just have a look at how many we add. But we only have one, so that's uh, just half a dozen. Right, we've got a different uh, set of figures out here, just to make some distinction from the other squad, and uh, immediately we're in sight of the French. So let's have a look and take an insight test. Both were moving as in the other example, and uh, here again the Germans have the initiative. I'm going to say all of the cavalry are in uh, in sight, so we're going to have four of the rifles pick out the nearest four, including our character, and we've got uh, we've also got a submachine gun here. So uh, one of them, uh, I'll say essentially that the nearest man, in fact, it's the one who got uh, knocked back beforehand, is the nearest for our submachine gun, and then a rifle for each of the others. So the nearest uh, fours again. So where uh, that's two. Uh, and that's going to be a hit. Mark it with a three because the submachine gun has uh, three in terms of uh, its um, capability. So the first time at firing at my character, uh, that's one. It's going to be a hit uh, because uh, although both are moving, they're not moving fast. 
next man uh, is missed. And there's a hit. And finally, last man, that's a hit as well. So that's the results. Uh, so we're going to start by testing uh, the one that's been hit with a submachine gun, so we roll three dice. So we're rolling against the rep of uh, first guy, three dice, and uh, that's an automatic kill. We're rolling against my character, uh, three, his rep's five, uh, so uh, we'll see whether he uh, drops back, but he survives one hit. Uh, three achieves his uh, rep so to see whether uh, he will drop back as well. Last man, uh, five, uh, he's out of the game. So as a result of that, uh, we've got three casualties from the French. I've So they're going to duck back into cover. They're on horseback at the moment, but they're going to dismount uh, here behind this building. But also we've had people uh, killed, so we need to do a morale test. As well, we've got my character who will help that process, but let's do that. So a man down test, let's first of all start and see whether the uh, leadership of my character will help the situation by one. No, it won't, because we've got a six. So my leader, my character I should say, uh, we end up with one. First of the two cavalrymen, uh, one also. Second. One also, let's see what the result is. Well, that's fairly disastrous, because uh, we are at half strength. I've lost uh, three of our six and with a one for all three of those characters the result of that is to leave the battlefield so our uh, cavalry will disappear leaving our uh, infantry to uh, uh, engage the germans let's have a look at the uh, skills and attributes too it might have been easier if uh, my character was killed and uh, he could have cheated death but he wasn't instead he's gone to uh, fight another day unfortunately it's not in this uh, in now, I mentioned at the start of the turn uh, that we might potentially get reinforcements so uh, let's have a look and see what they are uh, the we work on the campaign uh, morale figure which is four we're on patrol so we minus one that's a three let's see uh, whether we get uh, any arriving so we've got uh, one there so one means because we haven't already got some reinforcements we get some uh, appearing but what are they So that's going to be a one. A one means that we get a French squad uh, plus uh, a reinforcement support option. So we're going to get uh, some French infantry and I'm going to uh, throw in a mortar uh, as well. I'm going to add that into uh, into the mix. So we get, uh, we're get we going to have six men. Uh, we'll have a machine gun and uh, NCOs, but uh, let's see, we need to roll 1d6 to see how many uh, riflemen we've got. And 11, so we've got a a large squad uh, that comes into uh, into the game. I'm going to elongate the game a little bit and say that the French forces, the French reinforcements, uh, uh, arrive from uh, uh, underneath that bridge there. So that's where I'm going to bring the, uh, uh, the figures on. I'm also going to roll for uh, the rep. So let's start with the rep of the mortar team. Uh, two. So I was going to have one, two, three. Is a three, four, five, six is a four, uh, so that's a three. Rep of the infantry unit, same uh, way again. Two, so again it's a three. I'm going to add a character, so uh, I'm going to add a character officer, uh, Claude Petit, and uh, let's see what his rep is as well. We get a six, it's a five, four, five is a four, one, two, three is a three. It's a three, so we've got a fairly uh, low level quality in terms of our uh, French forces. I'm going to add. Uh, a skill and attribute again doesn't have a skill and then we've got uh, table six number three so at the end of the turn things are really beginning to develop we've got our Germans on this side taking control of the station and will they be able to advance across and uh, take the town hall the French have had uh, Problems with their cavalry getting uh, knocked out, but at least they're getting reinforcements and advancing at the end of the table there. So let's move into the next turn. Turn five, so activation. Uh, we've got nothing for the French there with the six, uh, but we do have activation for are Germans on the table and the PEF. So let's have a look and see how they operate. So the last PEF unit first of all. And uh, two of them uh, pass, so that's positively uh, moving towards uh, the uh, the French. You can just see the marker there, uh, it's just on the screen now. 
uh, they've moved in a similar position or more or less the same position as this original unit as it moved across. Germans have just had great success with the uh, French with the cavalry however remember of course it's the non-player so uh, we want to see how this unit will react whether it sees itself in a defensive position or a patrol or an attack so the first thing to do is roll the first 1d6 and see what we get so with a three it sees itself in a defensive position roll uh, the rep uh, against that and that's a pass of two the unit here perceives at least for this particular turn that it is defensive if it could fire at uh, an enemy it would do it can't in this situation so it stays in this position to test this unit uh, let's see whether it thinks it's on patrol defense or attack with a six it thinks it's on attack so compare it to the rep and it's, that's, that's one. This unit will uh, move towards the enemy. Uh, we might, so we're in the building here, so we might uh, struggle, it might be about four inches, but we can get into a, a firing position, I'm sure, and uh, it will then engage. The unit have moved into position, so we've got an MG34 that's gonna fire, and three rifles as well, and they're gonna fire at uh, the approaching French infantry, just over here. Right, we need to do the insight test. Germans get a plus one because they are in cover, so effectively we're going to have five for the Germans and uh, three for the French. Uh, so the uh, Germans see first. Start with the MG, a rep of four. And that's uh, two, so that's going to be a hit. Point out that in terms of the sway of the machine gun, the suitable angles, it's actually going to spread its five uh, hits across those three infantry there. So two on the first two and one on the one at the back. Now I've got the, uh, one of the riflemen is actually firing at the officer right at the back. He's got a simple line of sight. Uh, and that's uh, one out of two rolls. We have to check the that. Rifleman fires to the infantry, which is next to the brasserie. Uh, and that's a hit also. The other uh, rifleman will actually fire at that target again. And uh, uh, it's a miss. Well, effectively what's happened here is the Germans have moved into, pos into position, fired with the uh, uh, light machine gun and rifles, uh, the unit's been caught in the open and taken quite a lot of casualties here potentially, so we need to roll, and I'll start here, the first unit which is uh, the man who's next to uh, the brasserie. So well, the first man's been hit once uh, by the brasserie, and that's a three, so that's uh, that's actually his rep. The rep uh, means you're knocked out. So uh, first man's down. Next we have two dice, and uh, above uh, his rep twice, so he's uh, knocked out also. So two, and that's killed. Just a one. Uh, but he's knocked out. The officer. At uh, one, uh, he ducks back. Well, that was devastating. We've uh, ended up with a man in the middle there who'll need to take a man down test. Look further out there, we've got three knocked out and we have one uh, killed outright and then our officer is uh, all the way back here behind the church to take some cover but he will certainly need to take a man down test. I'm just going to make a judgement call on this particular leader. He's not actually with anybody, he's not being led, he's just an individual and in this moment I think we need to roll against his rep to see what his response is for such a devastating uh, fire. How, uh, goes against his rep, that's one, and one in terms of um, this situation means he would be removed from the board. Even with a personal attribute of initiative, which has a, a variance of one, uh, with a five he hasn't done it, so uh, we're looking at, uh, at a one and he will leave the board. In this situation, uh, we have just the individual in the middle who needs to take a test. Um, I think he can be influenced by his leader. The guy standing next to him can be can use his initiative, although he's not taking a leadership test himself, or he's not taking a, a test for man down. So uh, I think I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say the guy next to him is going to use a little bit of leadership. They've only got uh, three for a rep themselves, so let's see how we go. Leadership test is one, so that adds one to uh, the so role who's being tested. Uh, gets one. We get one from the leadership. So I'm going to say that we have two uh, as a consequence at the end of that. As a consequence, I'm going to say he ducks back uh, into the building for some cover. Right. I think I'm going to call a halt to the game just at this stage uh, for two reasons. One is that I've just been testing the uh, rules in terms of um, man down. And actually, 
The support uh, you, uh, rules now include something which is called uh, the will to fight. So I'd rather do the game where I've got all of the uh, all of the stuff correct, I think. And I'm using something slightly older in, uh, in terms of what's in the normal version 4. Uh, secondly, I think the French are going to really struggle here. Uh, I think what I could do is set up another game based on this one. So not change the uh, board, but perhaps say that the uh, French uh, get more uh, support, more in, uh, in position. And uh, we run the game again from this stage uh, onwards as a new game. So I'm going to do that. Um, so uh, that's uh, where we finish, which I think is very much a German victory. So can I just say thanks very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate uh, uh, thoughts, comments uh, on uh, either the YouTube channel or on the uh, Facebook group, the Nuts Man-to-Man uh, -man Combat Facebook group. It's been uh, really growing uh, great this week, so uh, thanks very much for that. And uh, I will put together uh, another game which uh, includes uh, more of the new support uh, rules. If you haven't got that then can I suggest uh, one of two things which is to go across to the Facebook group and join and uh, we'll, we have on that the PDF that you can just download. And secondly, uh, if you also uh, join the uh, YouTube channel, the Wargaming World YouTube channel, then it'd be great to uh, grow the channel further and get some more ideas and thoughts about how we do other games. So we'll stop this game here and uh, we'll have another one which is the next development of this over the next week or so.